Hello and welcome. Before we get started with today's subject or today's video, just want to address a question from one of the viewers and I'm sorry I've forgotten your name. He asked me when he saw me poking around inside of one of the sets when it was playing, you know, if that was dangerous and do I use an isolation transformer. And I explained to him that I usually have one hand in my lap when I'm working on something and I'm not grounded. And I most definitely use isolation transformers. That is safety item number one. But to back that up, I have this isolation transformer, this Heath kit unit, the one with the two meters. That is an isolation transformer ahead of a Variac. And that's the one I use to bring radios up when I'm initially powering them up for the first time. And I am once again going to reiterate that a Variac in and of itself is not an isolation transformer. They are an auto transformer and you are definitely referenced the line and you know the danger from getting grounded and electrocuting yourself is there. This has both an isolation transformer and a Variac inside. So if you're using a Variac, you need an isolation transformer ahead of it. But I have the Heath kit. And then I've got this little unit right here. This thing will handle just under an amp here. Once I have the set up and running, and you know, I'm, I know it's fine. A lot of times I'll switch over and I use this little isolation transformer here. Simply because the Heath kit, um, the Variac inside that has a mechanical looseness somewhere inside it and it buzzes, it tends to hum. And uh, this thing is silent, so I use this and it's got a little indicator light here that comes on and lets me know that it's live. Just a reminder that it's live. And I actually have a third isolation transformer, this big beast right here. Uh, that'll handle nine amperes if I'm working on big equipment and I need something, you know, something that's going to draw some power. I'll plug into that unit over there and I have a 5 amp Variac that I can control with that if I need to. 90% of the time the Heath kit is absolutely fine, but I do like my little guy right here. It's uh, handy to have on the bench. I can move this guy around easily to the other end of the bench if I need to. So not one, not two, but three isolation transformers. That's rule number one, number two, and number three. Use an isolation transformer. Okay, on to today's video. On the bench today is a gift from Vic M. And I am just blown away by this. Uh, this thing is in such beautiful condition. It is just absolutely fantastic there's a little scuff on the front here but this thing just it's gorgeous it does have a replacement handle but it's you know decent handle and we flip this up up and look at that that's just a gorgeous little set and this grill cloth is metal perforated metal Let me get you a close up of that that's actually a metal grill over the speaker. That, what a wonderful little set. And oh, this has the little red indicator. When you radio's on, the little indicator clicks in red and goes away when it's off. The little cover comes off now. I haven't taken this out of the cabinet yet. I have looked it over, but this will be the first discovery with you guys. But I want to show you what's back here. This is a gem. We're going to open the rear cover of this. And we have our antenna that's removable. Uh, interceptor. Interceptor beam scope is what they're calling it. Uh, if this was a Zenith transoceanic, I think there's, or Zenith, I think there was a wave magnet. I don't remember exactly. One of, one of the radios had a wave magnet. But it's got like a three foot 
or one meter long cable. And it says it's for planes, trains, hotels, and automobiles. And you can see that here they're in the train and it's stuck on the window. Now, can you imagine trying to use these suction cups on the window in your airline flight today? How quickly would you be uh, in handcuffs with the Sky Marshal? <laughs> I remember years ago before all the bad stuff happened, I used to have a small um, GPS satellite antenna that I plug into my laptop and as I was flying, because I spent many, many, many hours in airplanes traveling, I could follow along on my laptop on, you know, a map and I knew exactly where the aircraft was. But after 9-11, uh, they wouldn't let me use that anymore. They wouldn't let me put anything near an aircraft window. So some of the fun days are gone, but uh, this little antenna has a little resting place right here on the door. What a fabulous little setup, and I believe it plugs in. Yes, it does. I believe that's a plug. There it comes. So we can unplug the antenna to uh, remove the radio. There's uh, a lot of oxidation. It's not actually rust, but this is just the, I guess that's CAD plating. I imagine this is probably toxic stuff. I shouldn't be handling it barehanded probably, but at my age I don't think it's going to kill me faster than nature is going to get me. So we're going to unplug the speaker. And we've got our battery connections here. I don't want to turn this thing on until we've checked the uh, um, uh, filter capacitors. I'm going to put this note back here. There's going to be a permanent note inside of this radio so I know who gave it to me. I won't forget. And what a beauty. These are all 1 volt tubes or battery tubes in here, but they're octal battery tubes. Well, somebody's done some work in here. This uh, grid cap wire has been replaced. That's a modern wire. This is an original wire. I don't want to try to pull that off the tube and yank the grid cap loose. Uh, we'll deal with that later. But General Electric Inspector 23 and General Electric something. I can't read the number anymore. That's been wiped off. But uh, let's see here. Get this out. Are there screws underneath? You're learning this. Oh, 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 oh. I'm seeing asbestos. This whole thing is asbestos underneath here. Eesh. Shows the battery hookup. There's kind of a cardboard thing here in the middle. I don't know what exact. Oh, I'll bet that's to store this ribbon into because the batteries would be in this compartment and this compartment. Took two 45 volt batteries for 90 volts B, and then on top of that, two four and a half volt batteries for 9 volts for the series string on the filaments. Okay, uh, let's get the knobs off. And uh, see what we've got here. That's not the right screwdriver. Are these tight? Oh, huh, no, they're finger tight. Okay. Are we in frame? Just barely, huh? Maybe I should back the camera up just a little bit. Make it easier to stay in frame. <clears throat> yeah, this screw's loose also. I don't know what, if anything, has been done to this. I really don't know the history other than he said it's been laying around forever. <clears throat> and he's never going to do anything with it. Uh, I should have closed the filter cap, or not the filter cap, the tuning cap. Uh, where is it? There it is. That way I don't accidentally poke my finger in here and bend the plate. Try not to drag it over the asbestos. Oh, something's been hot or leaked. It's probably this capacitor here, is my guess. 
This has been totally recapped. My goodness. Did he just want to get rid of this set? This has been totally, totally reworked. The only thing I see in here that's original, unless these are modern replacement caps, I don't see a date code on them. Yeah, this, every waxy paper cap in here has been replaced. And a fairly neat job indeed. Wow. That's a surprise for me. There's like a six inch speaker in there. Oop, that's a beauty. No, that doesn't disconnect. That's too bad. Oh well. Yeah, there's a six inch, at least a six inch speaker in there. Yeah, that's a good six inches. My goodness. Um, okay. 150, 150, and 50. Let me get a schematic. And uh, I don't want to lay that down on the dial face. Let me turn this around. One thing I did notice was the indic the uh, there that's better. I noticed that when I hope oh. nope I guess not. I thought that would go level to level. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I must have gone too far with it. That's better. All right, I am going to get the schematic over here and see if I can figure out where the, uh, boy, that's a mess, where the, uh, no. First thing I'm going to do is clean some of this powder off of here just to clean this up. Um, and then we'll get the schematic out and find out where to hook up my B+. I'll be back. Okay, what we've got here is one of my old t-shirts from Bangkok. And uh, this has gotten to the point where it's rotting, so I'm just going to moisten it up a little bit so that this doesn't turn into floating dust. I'm just going to go around and wipe everything down, get rid of that chalkiness that's on the chassis. Is it inside as well? Yeah, it's inside as well. But the moisture will keep the dust from floating around. I won't be breathing it in. So I'm going to do that and then uh, look at the schematic and we'll pick up from there. Okay, before I put power to this with my capacitor tester voltage thing like I usually do. We'll go over the schematic together here briefly because if we notice we've got a 117Z6 that runs directly off line current so it's heater and in this case it is a heater uh, directly across the line 117 volts. That provides uh, it says here 117 volts on pins 4 and 8. They've got the cathodes tied together and the anodes tied together, so it's just a half-wave rectifier. We go through a 40, a resistor, a 40, you have a Pi filter here. That comes up, well that provides uh, B+, plus. that's our battery voltage, that'll be around 90 volts here. Then it comes up here through another 950 ohm resistor to a 40 microfarad, another 950 ohm resistor to a 20 microfarad. That's loaded with a 12,000 ohm bleeder resistor. That comes down here and provides our filament voltage. So they're deriving the filament voltage from the B plus through a series of resistors. And they're using these to drop the voltage down so that we end up with our Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven volts roughly of uh, 
filament, or yeah, that's filament in this case. In fact, let's see what they say, 1.4 volts DC, so it'd be 1.4, you know, 2.8, so on and so forth, totaled up. So I'm going to pull the speaker out and plug that in as well as the antenna because when I power up these capacitors, if everything is looking okay as the voltage comes up, if they're not drawing a lot of current, this radio is going to turn on by default because all of the heaters will be on at the same time. So let me, uh, yeah, even if the switch is off, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to power the radio up either way so we'll find out if it has any life when we turn the, the B plus on let me get everything pulled out okay the 117 B plus is on pins 4 and 8 so I've got a tube socket thing plugged in there and I've picked off pin 4 so I can inject my excuse me my 117 volts DC I've tie wrapped the speaker leads to the magnet. I always get this queasy feeling in the pit of my stomach when the wires are coming dangling directly out of the transformer. I, you know, who knows how many times that joint's been flexed and I don't want to break any wires off. Uh, I'm curious, after all the bending and plugging and unplugging, if whatever they have for wire in here is still intact in the antenna before I power it up and think I have a dead set. Let's see if we have continuity. According to the schematic, we should have continuity on two leads. There's three leads here and they're all populated, but I think they're just using one as a tie point, a terminal point. So I'm going to go on the assumption that uh, there's only two wires. I imagine there's one down each side of this. I can see what looks like a wire stitched in each side. So there should be continuity across those two. They were on ohms. Uh, times 10 is good enough, I guess. And uh, we'll see if we have continuity on at least two of these pins. And yes, we do. Oh, is that an intermittent or is that just me? clip it on there. No, nope, it appears we have good continuity through the uh, antenna. And yeah, I don't think that other pin is connected. That's in frame, yeah. I don't think that other pin's connected to anything. So at this point we'll think we think the antenna's fine. I'll plug that into the back of the set. Oops, the speaker's there. Way down the other end. Am I going to be able to, is this oriented up or down? Carefully. Fortunately, it's oriented up, okay. separate all our battery connections. Do they go live? Let's take a look. I've got a slightly clearer schematic here. Unless we're on battery, which we shouldn't be. There's a switch in the back. Uh, battery AC. We're on the AC position. It was on the battery position. Hmm. I think Let's verify that, shall we? There's battery AC. And one would hope that they would have the battery position on the battery side. Well, let's hope they're logical thinkers. And again, separate the battery connections. Okay. Are we ready? We have power here, we have ground, the antenna, we have speaker. Alright, I think I am going to move you guys back a little bit so that we can try to see everything here in frame. If I carefully move everything down, this 
guy out of the way. Separate everybody. Okay. Where are we at? Try to get everything in frame here. Whoops. Alright. There's our... Yeah, we don't need to be that high. What am I doing? Wrong set of meters. Okay. DC power is on. The voltage is turned to zero. Give it a minute to warm up. Uh, let's see. Do I have C volts? Where's my small... Yeah, we've got voltage. Okay, so I'm going to turn that one down. We'll put this on test. I'm going to start bringing up. I'm afraid my hand's going to be in the. It's all right. We'll start bringing up. Now, you see the milliamp meter? Watch it drop back down. No, it's not dropping. It's not doing anything now. It started up and then it dropped. There's a hundred volts. I'm not seeing anything. Hmm. Pin four. Ground. I'm seeing nothing and hearing nothing. The milliamp meter started up and then fell away. I'm seeing no reaction from filter capacitors at all. Is the light a little light in the... Probably not. There it is. See, I'm getting nothing. As if there's no filter caps. Okay. As I was getting my other test clips ready, I decided that uh, I needed to go upstairs and overclock my 286 a little bit. And place your bets now as to how many miles this coffee cup gets on the bench. I came back down here and I'm staring at the schematics because it's been bothering me that it's going to be virtually well, not impossible, but highly improbable that every single schematic in our schematic, every single electrolytic capacitor in here, and there's a bunch of them on the schematic, has failed open. I should have been seeing some charge discharge cycle when I put the B plus in there, and nothing, nothing was showing up. And I came back down here and I'm looking the schematics over and I'm seeing all the ground points for all of the capacitors. And if you look in, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's ground points all over the place inside this thing. Just all kinds of ground connections. So yours truly assumed that all these ground connections went to ground. This schematic has no indication that it does otherwise than that. This schematic, it's got GE stamped on it. No indication on that one. And while I'm sitting here staring at this one, this shows up. 
that tells me that ground is not ground. It says denotes B minus. This ground denotes chassis. And that's common. It's not uncommon to have that, but two of these schematics give you no hint to that. And just quickly glancing inside of here, you see grounds connections everywhere. They're in there probably for noise and they're just everywhere in here. The clue, if I'd been a little more alert, would have been both of the filter capacitors are mounted on Bakelite insulators. That means they're floating above ground. That also means that, as you can see, this filter cap's got paper, a cardboard tube over the top of it to protect it. This one doesn't. That means if you touch this and the chassis, when this sets on, you're probably going to get belted. Now, I don't know exactly. This might be the one on the filament string, but it's still got probably 90 volts on its shell before it goes through the resistors to get to the tube fil filaments. or tube, Yeah, the tube filaments. So this should have a cardboard sleeve over it as well. Uh, just like this one does for shock protection. And, and I guess... When, when you clean the dirt off, it's obvious that these are both on phenolic or Bakelite insulators. But it didn't dawn on yours truly here. Hence the overclocking. So, what I'm going to do, looking in here, we have a ground connection on our first high voltage cap. I'm going to clip my negative lead there, put my positive lead positive lead back where it was we'll hook the speaker back up and see what happens when I start applying power B plus to this thing and again the B plus is going to wake up the filaments the radio will turn on by default ah thank you Folgers so let's get on with that quit yakking more connecting Let's see if I can get these to fit. Because I don't have ready access to a ground through the tube socket for that little adapter I had. That's not going to fit under there. And I can't stand the chassis up. Maybe I can lay it on its back. Let's try that. I've got to connect the speaker or we won't hear anything. Bring the speaker back over here. Yeah. Are we in frame? Probably not. There we go. Cinegraphic, cinematographic, yeah, cinematographic magic. Always here at the radio mechanic. Excellent camera work. Okay, flip you on your back. Stand our antenna up so that it's got a prayer of picking up some signal. And while I was peering in here, I found one waxy cap that's been mi uh, missed. It's hidden down here underneath the volume control, and I just I didn't see it until about a minute ago. I spotted it lurking down underneath here, hiding. So we'll get that one changed out. It's going to be a chore. Its connections are buried way down here and way down in there. Whether they did that intentionally because it was a pain in the neck or whether they just overlooked it because it's so well hidden in there, it's hard to say. But it's an easy one to overlook. I certainly can't find fault for something like that. Again, separate all our battery connectors. We don't want any disasters here. All right. Negative. If I can get it on the wire. And positive goes here. 
volume controls most of the way up set your back a bit and bring some stuff up into view there we go all right voltage is down DC is hot let's start bringing up the voltage and yes we're seeing current being drawn finally and we've got constant current being drawn now bear in mind we do have uh, 50 milliamps of heater and we're not seeing oh yeah there's capacitor action there okay I'm hearing nothing out of the radio whatsoever. And I'm wondering why there's only 25 milliamp years of current being drawn. When we have uh, 50 milliamp heaters. Absolutely nothing. Go in here one fingered and see if I can get bit. I'm hearing nothing out of the audio lamp. Absolute silence. Okay, but at least now we can tell we're connected to the capacitors. Uh, which tube can I safely pull? Okay, if I pull the 3Q5, shut this off. If I pull the 3Q5, it will open our filament string. That leaves the filament string open. Let's see what we get now. Okay, so the filter caps charge and go down. And the light goes out. So that tells me the filaments at least are getting voltage. Or get drawing current. And there's some filter capacitor action there. It's not great, but they are charging and discharging. So the tube filaments are, going, are coming on. This is evidenced by the continuous draw of current. We're in the AC position, which we should be because we're supplying voltage as if the rectifier is there. But we're getting zero output from the speaker. Ah. Okay, we're carrying a full load of coffee, so the 286 should be waking up. What are we missing? Why do we have nothing? And should we be drawing... Well, we'll draw, draw a little current through the bleeder. But with the 3Q5 removed, we shouldn't be drawing any filament, anything. Nothing in here is going to be... We've in frame. Yeah. 
have you follow along my thought process here. We've pulled this tube so this part of the circuit is completely open. We're injecting voltage here. It's going through these capacitors and these capacitors. There's a bleeder resistor but that's 12k if I'm reading it correctly. It's a pretty small print and it didn't reproduce well but it sure looks like a 12k which is just a bleeder resistor. Nothing else should be drawing any current at this point because the, all of the filaments are off. So we're still drawing 510 milliampers of current. But that does not explain. Let me grab a tube manual here. You do own a tube manual, don't you? 1N5, 1H5, LMN, 1N5. Yeah. 1.4 volts at 50 milliampers. So the tubes do draw 50 milliampers. So we should have seen at least a 50 milliampere draw. And we were seeing 25 milliampers of draw. Which is kind of strange. Unless... No, there's no switch in the circuit. So that wouldn't be a bad connection. We do know at this point that we don't have any excessive current draw. I'm wondering if I should throw the 117 Z6 in there and plug it in. But I'm hesitant to do that until I know why we don't have the right filament draw. That is very strange. Unless they're running it through enough resistors that they've reduced the draw to conserve battery. Suppose that's a possibility. I could run the math on all those resistors. Hmm. All right, I'm going to plug that 3Q5 back in. Discharge the caps. Absolutely no noise out of this thing whatsoever. Dead as a stump. I suppose the next thing to do is take some voltage checks. to come up with a way to stand this up on this end if I want to keep the speaker connected. Let me uh, rearrange some stuff here so that we can work in here without endangering the set. All right, since you were gone, what has been happening was every time I moved this set, I was worried about damaging the dial card and the needle, so I pull that completely off that allows me to set the radio upside down I'm not stressing the wiring on the back I'm not standing it up on end endangering it falling over yada yada and the card was coming loose the dial card was coming loose anyway so that's over there gluing took all the tubes out and tested them 
and they all test like brand new tubes with the exception of the oscillator converter. The converter section shows new. The oscillator for some reason looks a little bit low. It's just above the questionable point, but as long as that breaks in the oscillation, it'll be fine. And I've got the power back on this and I'm just curious why we're not operating and uh, oh, I've got audio now. Okay. But we're still not receiving anything. I think at this point. definitely have have audio coming in I'm gonna go after that waxy capacitor and change it out that is actually the coupling cap between our detector and our volume control that's this 0.01 here I believe come down no that's not that's AVC what's that no, that's on the center leg of the pot. Yeah, that is the coupling cap. Okay. So that's going into our first audio. That comes out of our IF transformer. Goes through a .01, then this .005. That's this guy here, and into the first audio. So I'm going to pull that waxy cap out of there. I don't think that's the problem. but I'm going to pull that out stuff the rectifier in and turn this thing on and run it on AC and start taking some voltage checks. So let me get that cap changed out and we'll pick up. I went to uncoil the plug. We got the capacitor changed and we went to un uncoil the plug here and it came, the wire came out and whoever put this together stripped the end of the wires and this is designed not to have them stripped it's a cute little plug. It says the handy plug on the back of it. It's got the same little paint speckles on it that the radio does. Evidently somebody was painting with a roller at some point in its life. And the plug you can see is covered with all the little white paint speckles. But, uh, these are supposed to be used just by clipping the wire end off and it pierces the wire and the insulation is what gives it the strength to stay inside. It's supposed to support the wire inside of here. In fact, I think it's supposed to stick it down in the hole and around. So that's what we'll do. There's two holes down in there. I think the way this is designed to work. Come on, get over the bump. Like so. And then the back threads on and pierces the insulation, and the insulation provides support to keep it from pulling out. And, uh, since this is an isolated chassis, we're probably okay using this very classic old plug. As long as I can wind it down tight enough with my arthritic hands here to uh, pierce the insulation. Ah, we'll find out if I have accomplished a trick. It looks like it went down to the same line. Okay, we have the rectifier in. The cap is changed. I'm going to plug this thing in and turn it on. And uh, see what we get. Do some voltage checks. Uh, I'm going to have to move you guys back. And this is why, once I'm up and running, I usually use that other isolation transformer. I don't have that thing in the center of the bench because it takes up so much room. All right, we're on dim bulb. Switches on. Speakers plugged in, antennas plugged in.
Yeah. I'm not going to be able to get everything in the field of view here. It's all right. I'm trying about 20 milliamps. Probably the 117 Z6, is it? Yeah, Z6. 3044. We're at 90 milliamp years. I suspect all of that is this at this point. As we won't have any heater current until that warms up. There's 60 volts. Sixty milliamp years keep coming up. There's eighty volts, eighty milliamp years. Okay, we've got some hum. So the audio amp's beginning to work. That oscillator is a little bit weak, so it's probably going to have to be driven fairly hard to wake up. Oh, we've got activity. I'm hearing noise. We're at 91 volts. A lot of distortion. Still not understanding why this didn't wake up when I was putting the DC into it because I'm providing the exact same voltages to the, to the same places. I just find it very bizarre. The only difference between difference between what I was doing and what's happening now is this tube is hot. But it's providing voltage to this point and the B minus is exactly what we were doing. I don't think that capacitor had anything to do with it, to be honest. Let's see what happens when we bring the voltage up. full power here. Still distorted. There's 120 volts. Sounds an awful lot like that ABC problem we had the other day, doesn't it? say one thing this sets pretty sensitive that WGAM just barely comes in on all the other sets and this is pulling right in yeah this definitely sounds like it has an ABC problem And 
5, we come out 4.7 meg. Wow, there's no real isolation. This is a one end fun. Wow. I would have expected. Oh. Yeah, you're in frame. Okay. I would have expected to see like a 2 meg ohm resistor here isolating the ABC from the audio. Now there is a 2.2 .2 meg here. Yeah, I guess, okay, that's isolating that, 4.7. Okay, we're good. We're good. I was looking at the wrong line. Our AVC comes down here. There's our 2.2 .2 meg. I'm going to go looking for this 0.1 microfarad cap and see if I can find that guy. We'll be back when okay, I Okay, this is going to be one of those sets that is hypercritical to lead dress. Hear how distorted that is? Listen to that. So what this is going to take is going through here checking all these capacitors, making sure that the outside foil is going in the right direction because these aren't marked. And whoever did this probably didn't know that. And I'm just gonna have to move components around until the noise goes away. I have never did find that cap yet. I can try adding another 0.05 across the AVC and see what happens. But this set is so sensitive. In fact, let's try something. I just took the antenna off of it. That's the antenna off of this set, and this is a station that the other receivers struggle to get in with the antenna on them. That's how hot this receiver is. Yeah, this one's going to be fun, guys. I'm not going to bore you with the whole process, but what I'm going to have to do is go through, check where the outside foil is on each of these caps, and put it in the orientation I think it should be in. And then just try redressing everything. Good grief. Okay. I'm going to shut the camera. I'm still working on the uh, AVC question, but listen to the ringing. Hear that? That's this tube. So I have a couple of 3 AQs on order to replace that one. Well, I am on day two of playing with this set. 
and I have finally managed to align the IF. I struggled with this thing for hours. Every time I tried to peak the IF, the set would break into oscillation. And I went underneath and, well you saw how it looked like, hard to tip it up now. I tried really hard. I tucked all the capacitors away and you saw it breaking into oscillation and you know squealing and howling the other day. Finally in desperation I swapped the IF amplifier for the RF amplifier. I just swapped the two tubes. Problem disappeared. So there was something, this is one of mine that's in here now, there's something, even though this tube tests 100%, there's something about it that just breaks this set into oscillation. This is not uncommon for these battery tubes. Uh, actually, the first of mine that I put in here, the first one N5 I put in here, I had to replace it because all you had to do was tap on the radio and the tube would ring. It was so microphonic, it would just sit there and howl until you touched it and it would stop. So I put another one in. Now I do have a microphonic 3, uh, what is this, 3Q5, 3, yeah, 3Q5. If you listen, and you hear it ringing, now I don't have another one of those in stock so I ordered I've ordered three more to put in my stock. Hopefully one of them. This is very, very common with battery tubes. I can remember struggling with this years ago. Uh, these octal battery tubes. The miniature seven and nine or seven pin battery tubes didn't have nearly as many issues as these octal ones did. And the problem is, if you have that tube in the set with the speaker mounted here, it just causes all kinds of distortion issues. Right now it sounds pretty good, but you put this in the box, put this in the cabinet, you can hear. The rest of these are pretty good, but the first one of mine that I put in here in the IF unlivable. It, you'd tap the table and it would ring for like two minutes before it settled down I, and if I grabbed it it would stop. But it would get feedback from the speaker it would just continue to howl. Very common with these uh, octal battery tubes but now I think I have a set in here that's going to work. <laughs> so my next step is to probably slip this thing back in the cabinet because it appears to be working fine at this point. I I didn't film any of it because I was just sitting here ripping my hair out for hours and hours moving capacitors, bringing them, tuck them into the chassis and there's an actual one of the things they have here is the layout of where the component should be. I tried you know moving everything around getting it back to the location that they suggest because some of these sets can be a real problem child if the capacitors aren't in the same place they were when you started. But this turned out to be a tube issue. And I'm Paul Allen in Sydney, where it's the ASX pushing high by that. With one thing right now. We're free morning. We've been... Relative sensor. As is typical for these sets with a tuned RF amplifier, this is an extremely hot load receiver. Okay, I'm going to stick this back in the box and I think this one will be done. And uh, again, I did. filming what I did or, you know, videoing what I did, it would have just been boring. I just sitting here for hours moving capacitors, tucking them up inside and 
then trying and trying and trying and trying to get the IF alignment. Every time it would get near peak, it would just break into oscillation. But we got it licked, finally. And I finally said, you know, I finally said, it's got to be the tube. It's got to be the IF amplifier. And sure enough, as soon as I swapped it, problem went away. It's back in the box, and I'm waiting for my 3Q5s to arrive. But watch what happens when I take my hand off of the cabinet. Right now, I'm using my hand to uh, damp the vibrations. I'm just going to remove my hand. Purely mechanical feedback to, to the amplifier tube. I'm hanging on to the glass envelope. I'm going to let it go. The joy of octal battery tubes. That's it for this one, guys. Sorry it was so disjointed, but uh, this was a tough one. We'll see you soon. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Bye-bye now.